Thursday morning. The sun was beautiful yesterday and it's not today, but I don't live in Michigan where Jody Saladino does with all the snow. I hadn't checked it on the last couple days. I hope she's not still snowbound. <laughs> if y'all don't watch Jody Saladino's channel, go subscribe to her. She's a sweetheart. She's my northern friend. And uh, me and her just love each other. We just love, she is probably one of the most thoughtful people when it comes to cards and stuff that I've ever seen and I'm not. I love y'all. I love people. I just don't sit down and do cards. And I don't know why I don't because they mean so much to me. So I don't know why, but she's been covered up in snow last weekend and I'll, hopefully it's gone. But check out Jody Saladino, S-A-L, La, <laughs> you would think as many times I've written her, S-A-L-A-D-I-N-O, Saladino. Away girl and I tell her we love her name, Saladino, love it. Of course, I wouldn't trade my last name for anything in the world. Out of the darkness, into the light, it's where God brought me when I married John Light. There you go, how beautiful, what a romantic story. Guess what? I was told twice Sunday within, I'm gonna say five minutes, possibly 10, eight to 10, that I needed to write a book. The other one didn't have a clue that the other one had said it. But I was at mentoring and we divide up into three small groups out of our large group and share so that, it, because there's no way we could share out of our prayer journals and stuff like that. And then we come, we come together as a group, we break up into small groups, and then we're back together as a whole group. It's awesome. I went kicking and screaming, and I love it. It's been one of the most best things for me. We're talking about uh, Jesus' own leadership right now and how to be a servant leader. And that's what I was. When I was in my professional career, which y'all will never know me in that capacity, but reading the book, I'm so thankful that God made me a servant leader. Um, if we were doing a big project, see how squirrel I got away from the book. Squirrel! <laughs> Lynette Chapman sent me a thing on squirrel this week. It was so appropriate. I need to insert it here if I can remember it. I'll try to insert it here. Because it was so me. Um, but anyway, uh, where was I going? Where was I going? Where was I going? But when my group at the college, when we were doing huge projects, like we did this thing called Torch Invitational, where we brought like, I don't know, 1,000, 1,200 kids on campus to do academic testing. And they got scholarships from it. And they got summer scholarships, things like that. The biggest project in the world that I've ever done because you cannot imagine dividing them up into the categories that they're tested in, getting all the tests collected, and then getting people to put out, oh, it's just huge. But we did it like champs, but I was in the middle of it with my workers. I was right in the middle of it. And that's the way a servant leader does. They're in the middle of what's going on. But Sunday, when we divided into our small groups and we were just talking a little bit afterwards, Pastor Jamie said to me, she said, Suzanne, I see a book coming. Well, and I had read her what I'd written in my prayer journal. She said, oh my gosh, you're so articulate. And, um, and I said, well, I love to write. I don't really feel like I'm articulate, but that's what she said. And um, she said, I see a book coming. I see a book coming. And so when the small groups came back in, a lady that I'm not really close friends with, we know each other because we go to church, but we've never traveled in the same circles. Uh, some of my friends know her real well because they've had uh, kids to go to school together, but not her kids are all younger than mine. But she's very, oh, she moves in the spirit. She's a very, the Lord uses her prophetically. And, but she's just, so subdued with it, so 
such a lady with it, never forces herself. She walked into, back into the big group and looked at me and she said, you've been on my mind this week. Well, you know, that's a lot since we're not really close friends. And she said, you've been on my mind this week. I've been praying for you. And I said, thank you. And she said, I see a book coming. I just get chills saying that right now. Because guys, how much more can God tell you that there's a book in you than when two women, totally opposite of each other, within five to eight minutes, tells you there's a book in you? Oh my gosh. And yet another reason, another reason that I need my workspace, right? Yeah. I need my workspace. Okay, I gotta get some gas. Gotta go get my mold up. So oh my goodness, so cold. Well, it's not so wet. We're gonna be in rain today. And I was like, Suzanne, why did you not get your gas yesterday when the sun was shining? And then I thought, well, cause you didn't go nowhere. <laughs> so John comes in last night and I made homemade vegetable soup yesterday. It was the perfect day, it just cold and it had gotten cloudy in the evening and everything. And so he calls me Mary. My name is Mary Suzanne, but his grandmother was Mary. And so they always called his sister, Mary, Felicia. They called her Mary. And uh, after, cause they say she's just like her grandma, built like her and everything, kind of like I am my grandma. I wish I could have taken after the other side of the family. Small bones, small legs, small arms. I'm right the opposite. Anyway, so he calls his sister Mary, and he calls me Mary, which is really a love pet name when he when he does that. And um, which I love, by the way. <laughs> but him and his sister are like this. And Felicia watches all my videos, and I love her so much. I mean, you got to do some stuff, girl. In the next few weeks, I need some girlfriend time. <laughs> but she is the closest thing to a sister that I have since my sissy is gone. And we don't talk a lot, but buddy, we, 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 we get in a circle and fight for each other. And I, I just love her. I <laughs> just take the second to say, I love you sis. Um, but anyway, he came in and he said, Mary, cause I cooked twice this week, okay? <laughs> So he's excited about that. He's like, Mary, you look cute. Where have you been today? And I said, I haven't been nowhere. And he's like, he looked at me because I still had on my outfit from yesterday where I was teaching y'all. Still had my earrings on, which I don't wear jewelry in the house. He knows that. And he's like, you haven't been nowhere? And I'm like, no. I said, oh, I did a teaching lesson today. He was like, well, I knew. Because usually I still have my pajamas on if I haven't been anywhere. And uh, yes, that's what you do when you're retired. I know that's not a good schedule. I know that you need to get up and put clothes on. But when you have some days like I have, sometimes physically you keep your pajamas on. I, I see these people that say, you must get up by seven o'clock, get in the shower, fix your hair and your makeup and put on your clothes for the day when you're at home. Seriously? Really? <laughs> I'm not putting on any makeup unless I'm doing a video for y'all or going somewhere. Now, I do get up lots of days and put my clothes on because I wear, I told you I wear black leggings all the time. And, and if I'm doing stuff in the house, I'm gonna be burning up. So, you know, I gotta have something shorter sleeved on. And um, so I do like to get up and get my clothes on. It does make me feel much more productive, but days, the steroids seem to be helping the headache some. I was a lot better yesterday morning and especially in my neck area, but then yesterday evening it just... So if it's not better by the end of the week, I can communicate with my primary doctor by a portal that we have at the hospital. And if I, if it's not gone and better by the, I guess by tomorrow, I'm gonna write him and tell him I need to see the neurologist again. And that way it'll keep from having to get an appointment with him. And then, and so, um, and it may be that I can even call the neurologist and tell him what I'm going through and let him do another CAT scan 
just to be on the safe side. So John thinks the weather is really playing havoc with me. The only thing that concerns me is it's going down into my neck a lot. And, but there again, a massage or the chiropractor may help. Again, I, you know, I did all that before I knew I had the brain bleed and none of that helped. And I guess it'd be good to rule that out. Cause he says I get so tight in my shoulders and I know it's, you know, we're, we're all under stress. It's just a lot of different kinds of stress. But before I pick my mom love up, I'm taking her to the ear doctor. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about her hearing aids when I get her in the car, okay? Anyway, you're gonna love that one. Um, thank you. Oh my goodness. The comments that I have gotten from some of y'all on the forgiveness lesson yesterday. Some of y'all have blown me away. I've already gotten some personal emails. And when, you know, when something touches you tremendously and you don't want to put it on the YouTube wall, on the, you know, on the wall for everybody else to see, feel welcome to send me an email. My email is open to y'all. Now, just, just let me say this as a disclaimer. It may be days before I get back to you. But I read the emails that came to me yesterday, but I'm not going to answer them until I can sit down and answer them the way that is um, <coughs> respective of you. I'm not going to just send you a fly-by-night message because if you think enough of me to send me an email about a video I did, I'm going to respect you and write back with respect to you and what you're going through. So, but you know, if if there's ever a time you're like, I really don't want to put all this on the public page, feel free to send me an email. But hey, the public page is fine with me if you're fine with it, because I do answer all my comments. <laughs> I still do that right now. I don't know if I'll be able to do that forever. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of time. And sometimes a lot of y'all will just put a heart and I'll put a heart or you're just making a simple statement, but that just lets you know, hey, I read it, I read it. And everybody's response doesn't require a response back, but I just think it's important that you're investing your time in my videos for me to respect you. But you know, and I know the big YouTubers can't do that, but I'm not a big YouTuber. I'm God's woman out here trying to share the love and the forgiveness and the, the, the life that he's given us. So I want to invest in y'all. So thank you. And I'm just blown away. When I finished that lesson yesterday, I went, this is good. This is good. Thank you, Lord. Cause I had really studied and really just pulled material from a lot of different places. And I was like, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> His girlfriend. His girlfriend. Are you ready, Mary Faye? Not quite. Come on. Oh, it's time to go, sweetie. I'm supposed to be here. I got everything on with my shirt. And your shoes. You need some socks on. What, darling? I, hold on. I'll come there. Beginning of seasons. I need to take my stuff out. Uh -huh. You're really supposed to take it out, look at it, see if you wore it the last season. And if you don't do something, give it something. Get rid of it. <laughs> and that's what I need to do because I had forgotten all about that sweater. Well, so I bought that one for you <laughs> after I got mine. Yeah. Are y'all? I'm trying to get fixed. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Your own candid camera. Well, you're going to see door, a bath. Your you door know. is open. That don't matter if and I you feel like you wouldn't miss me. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> I wouldn't have near as much to I do. Wouldn't have energy hey, I wouldn't have near as much to do. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't have nothing to do. Put your seatbelt on now. The only thing I'd do is make a lot of racket if I went out. Well, that's true. You'd go out here talking. No, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't go out yes, talking. I'd just go out there. Well, this is it. You both This talk. is it. Make no mistake about it. This is it. She wasn't ready when I got there today. I was ready. I've been ready all morning. I just didn't have Well, you didn't have your shoes well, and socks on. You didn't have your hair. Done. Well, she said she'd done her hair. I had combed that hair three times. And it well, I had, to, I had to tease it some. And I said, do you not tease her? She said, I hadn't been teased in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and probably 
probably never will be. <laughs> there never will be. Well, if they got it now, I wouldn't know what they're doing. Well, if they did it now, it definitely would be a tea. I'm oh. a secret. Uh, I'm going to keep a secret. You're going to keep a secret on that? <laughs> well, we're going to... It yeah, is, we are. Hey, do you want to do Cracker Barrel? Because I know you haven't been in a while. I don't care where we eat. Well, we can go to Cracker but Barrel. I, like I know you do. Uh, most, we got two hours before our appointment. That is so the we'll, most home-tasting food in the country. Yeah, it should be. If I had to get away from that puppy for long, I'd just have to bring it up there. Yeah. Oh, she is mean. <laughs> She's just like you, Mary Faye. <laughs> no, but she just like me. I mean, she she, you won't. couldn't have had a gentle, sweet dog. You'd abused her. <laughs> I'm not she abused. has to. No, you're she, not an abuser. That's she true. She abuses me. Well, you need stands to be abused. On me, stands on you me. need to be abused to keep you in line. I'll tell you one thing. She is the sweetest thing I've seen. Although men her has little problems every now and then. That's good. That keeps your blood pressure up. <laughs> well, something does. Okay, we're going to the ear doctor. Now, I saved the story. Did you get them little things to I did. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I saved the story until I got you in the car. Okay. But mother has hearing aids. Yep. Let me preface this whole story, and then I'm going to let you tip her tea. <laughs> and then you've got to tell it very nice now awesome. so that I can use it. <laughs> Don't use any you Sunday school words. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, Mother has an old house. Y'all have seen that before. I mean, she's been living there. This year will be six, years, 64. Oh, shut up. 64 years. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to let them think we moved up there when I was like 10 or something. Yeah. But she, we will be, now you'll be up there 63 years yeah. this year. I don't know. Do you remember what month y'all moved up there? I don't even remember moving. <laughs> I don't even remember moving. You probably only had to move like two or three pots. Oh, just a, a, a bed, a no, couple bed, of beds, a, and a few bunch. pots and pans. And, and and beds with three beds every morning to make up for even to have been in. Well, that is, you know, that is not a nice way to talk Them about your children. Them two boys was like heaters. Oh, now she's changing it. So. Well, I'm not talking about your no. bed. I'm talking about the two boys. You go in there, he's look like two elephants have been in their beds, and you didn't know which end to start on. That's true. Well, uh, I wouldn't take them back. I would give, I would give them away. I wouldn't take them back either. <laughs> no, they wouldn't want to know how. Two big grown, <laughs> two big old grown dudes. You don't need to take them back. Oh, sure anyway, her house is old. So she has she has those metal cabinets I'd shown you. They're just oh gosh, they're just so worn out. But they're solid cabinets, okay? But she has a wooden cabinet in between her sink and her stove. And obviously it has an open back on it. And we've had a little problems with field mice and stuff, especially when Dana cuts the pasture. She's gonna get field mice in that house and we have to set traps. <laughs> But unbeknownst to me, she was putting her hearing aids just yeah. down in that drawer. In, in that jar. In, well, an open jar. Though. Yeah. An open jar. <coughs> and she kept saying, my hearing aids don't feel right. And I said, we have to get her ears cleaned out. Because the woman produces candles in her ears. <laughs> she produces so much wax in her ears. It's like dead gum. You could take it out and make candles. Oh, yeah, you could. I might start that. <laughs> But I mean, when we have to go and get her ears cleaned out every so often, and they take out these huge, so she just produces wax like crazy. So she said, they're not feeling right. And I said, well, um, I'm pretty sure your ears are stopped up again. And we just need to, I need to schedule it every three months when I'm there, just so we have an appointment to go back. Cause I'll lose track of time, you know, and then I'll schedule her appointment. So she said they wasn't feeling right. Dana, my brother was up there one day and he had said something to her and she told him they weren't feeling right. Tell him what's happened to your hearing aids, mother. What's happened to your hearing aids, mother? What happened to them? Yeah, what's happened to them? Tell, rats, tell them. The rats eat them. The rats. He put the wires in them. I can't even really think about it. <laughs> the rats have eaten the little wire part that it's goes just... behind her ear. They have eaten the wire yeah. off her hearing aids. Well, I mean, I am, I'm going to be, I'm going to say, yes, we're from the country when I go over here we're today. Hillbilly. Yes, 
<laughs> we do have running water. <laughs> we do have toilets. Yeah, we got a bathroom. But the rats are like rat. They're just little field mice. But a rat is a rat is a rat is a rat. <laughs> I didn't. You wasn't looking under there. I couldn't find nothing where they'd been doing their little poop. Oh yeah, they'd been doing their little poop. Yeah, I know. That could Wait, you remember? We had cleaned it out before when they ate one of your peels. Don't you remember? Y'all, I have the best video. Oh my gosh, I gotta try to think and link that below. Suzanne, don't forget. The rat that OD'd on your medicine. Don't you remember you were mother, listen. You were keeping some pills in that you were keeping your medicine in that drawer years ago. Yeah. Probably two, three, four years ago. Probably about three years ago. And don't you remember we found a dead rat by your sink? And when me and Dana got in there and started looking, there were pills in there and they were nibbled on. Oh, Those That rat had OD'd on mother's medicine. He died his butt fine. He it? did, so we took the medicine out of that drawer. I didn't think she was putting anything else back in that drawer. <laughs> we will have her a closed container. I mean, we, we may have to buy a brand new hearing aids. That's true. That you remember what I bet we're going to be talked about when we leave today. I don't think we're hillbilly. This is what you are. I'm not a hillbilly. I probably am. Just got a hillbilly for mother. <laughs> she can't hear real good, so she can't hear me whispering anything. I Did you hear that? Well, See, I told you. <laughs> I don't tell her I was nuts, did you? No, just told him you couldn't hear unless I was talking loud. I have said everything four and five times lately without the hearing aids. But the rats, or rat, it's usually one field mice that gets in there, or two, maybe. And they ate the wire. I think, but the wire wouldn't have had any wax, but I think the wax might have their scent. I don't know. I don't know what would make a rat. He's probably dead somewhere with his intestines all screwed up because he's got wire in his belly. He's probably dead down there in the bottom of the kitchen I've, sink. I've probably done cooking and stuff. Oh my goodness, have you ever? <laughs> yes, the rats ate Mama's hearing aids. That might be my that might much. be my title today. <laughs> that might be my title. Tell you one thing, I could give you a lot of titles if you want me to go back. Things just happened over here. Take me back. Take me back, oh Lord. To the place. Oh, there's all my trees. There's all your trees up there, little baby trees yeah. and mama tree. <clears throat> yeah, I love it. I've been watching them for years. It was such a pretty day yesterday, but no, our appointment was today in this rain. Oh, there's some Yeah, just a little bit. So, but yeah, by the time we eat, we're going to be pushing it. But guess what? The interstate is open again. I didn't ever know the time thing. <laughs> It's been closed for a year. I don't, I We've been having to take a detour for a year. What if you hadn't drove on the interstate or nowhere else for 20 years? What would you do? Did you ever drive on the interstate in Birmingham? No, no, not in Birmingham. I didn't I think you did. I, I drove all the way in Jasper and all that kind of places like that, but never in Birmingham. Uh, yeah, I didn't think you drove the interstate. But now my, our Aunt Betty, she drove the interstate till she was in her 90s, didn't she? Yeah, she'd drive anywhere. <laughs> She would. She would drive anywhere. Yeah, she, drove, drove, she drove all the way to Texas. Yeah, drove to Texas. Well, Y'all probably, were you in your 80s then? So, 70s probably? She was about five years older than me, I believe. They drove, her daughter lives in Texas, and they drove yeah, to Texas one time. Uh -huh. Probably in y'all 70s. So I still got a lot of hope. I got some good genes in me, so hopefully. <laughs> hopefully yeah, I'm going to be able to. Up until she just got where she couldn't get around. That was Mama's best friend. That's been the hardest lost mothers ever had is well, losing Aunt Betty. It, it, it is so strange about when we married, they wouldn't have a thing to do with me. Yeah, they were not friends they then. They were not friends. They would turn their chair if I was around. But, the thing about it is something just happened and we was the best of Well, and that's the way things happen sometimes. Sometimes you're not friends with people and you develop sometimes a, I think it's a good one. for that to happen. Uh -huh. you. Yeah, you develop this wonderful friendship uh -huh. through the years. So. She told me everything and I told her everything. And, and, that's been mother's greatest loss. Yeah. I mean, even though she's lost daddy and she, we've lost our seat, my sissy. I couldn't find your daddy half the time. That blink, blink, she's gonna take that off. <laughs> no, he saw, he was working out. out. <laughs> <laughs> he worked out now, sure enough. He was yeah, we didn't, thank God he didn't have a cell phone back then. You got a <laughs> thank God he didn't have a cell phone back then. No, <laughs> you never would have found him. <laughs> 
Oh man, let's not talk about that. No, we're not talking about that. My daddy was typical of the poem, The Little Girl with a Curl. When she was good, she was oh so good. But when she was bad, she was oh so bad. And that was really my daddy. He had a, I'm a lot like him. He had a lot of wonderful characters, characteristics. What? He was a leader. He was a provider. But he fought some demons, and he he never got victory over those demons. And another thing too, the Lord he, took him home. He thought he had to buy. He was one of the people that thought women did not have to know one thing about what he was buying. Oh, mother, we'd be sitting there, and the furniture truck would pull up, and he bought a brand new. Um, a, a, one of those huge, huge stereos for the house. I remember that. Yeah. And mother said her and her mother were sitting there one day and the furniture truck came up and she had a brand new sewing machine. And I mean, he bought wonderful stuff. He didn't buy nothing cheap. He bought really nice stuff. And that, that but that is kind of a out. trait that, of course, I don't think it exists anymore, but um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that because John and I have a partnership. Um, oh, you're supposed to have Yeah, a you're supposed to. But he was of the old school. Oh, the like, old school. Women didn't have no sense. You're just supposed to cook and have babies. Well, he knew you had sense. He I knew know. that. He knew. He yeah. He did. <laughs> he did. And hey, one thing but it was you. just he trusted you completely. Yeah. And there were a lot of good times, but there were a lot of bad times too. And uh, but he did. He had his whole family had demons, and I'm so thankful <laughs> that mother's blood. And hers has come in and made a change in our family yeah, uh, because he he fought demons to the day he died, and and he didn't die a natural death and either. And then he would help anybody needed help. He oh my gosh, he was he was, he was the the tower of strength for his whole family. Mm -hmm. They ran to him for everything, and. Um, Oh my God, I'm but so much like him, it's enemy. crazy. He had a touch of it in him that he could not get victory. He couldn't get victory, but he was ignorant to the ways to fight it spiritually. He really had never really been educated spiritually. And he, but, he was a worker, though. but if he had had the right person to work with him spiritually to work him through the demons there, he would have lived and been a wonderful man. He was only 62 years old when he got killed, and that's way too young to leave your grandbabies and your wife. Mother was 55, and that's just too young, but he, he brought it on himself because of his lifestyle. Oh, I made, I've told him every night not to go. So John and I are working on the basement. We're fixing to get me a big desk, a big desk area yeah. to go down there, and... And when he makes your big place, I want your pen in there, and I want to hear no, it before I die. Oh, Lord. She's yeah. so I work, sweet. I drove you, I mean, you went around the world nine times to get you to play that piano, and then you, I ain't heard you play it years. <laughs> you heard me the other day. Uh, I'm getting it moved upstairs. Michael's got a, some people that looks going to move it for me. Uh -huh. So I'm moving it upstairs, getting it out of the basement. Because that was always our fun. You know, we had so much fun. Today. Yeah. We sang. Oh, we were glorious singers. <laughs> Well, they were pretty good. Mother's got a good yeah. alto voice. Yeah, I used to get get that piano up there and get me and you singing some. Oh, yeah, we will sing. <laughs> I used to love to sit beside Mother when I was little at church <laughs> and hear her sing. I always sing alto. That's all. Uh, One of Mother's favorite songs is Holy, 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 Lord God. Yeah. You see, I cannot sing. I like it. Oh, you did just then. You can't sing it. I can't sing it. I got to put what the boy I do it in. Yeah. And you were, just wonderful. You were doing it. Well, I know this video is already long. We're going to Cracker Barrel to get this woman some dumplings. <laughs> dumplings, fried apples, and coleslaw. And I hope that, I hope it's not packed. Well, if she had to cook, even <laughs> the person that cooks for me. What now? I'm the one cook for her. <laughs> I'm not much of a cook anymore. And I cooked all Have my you been life. eating some of your dinners? Oh, yeah. Good, good. She's she, eating a lot of things. She told me she didn't have nothing to eat, and I went over there, and the freezer was full <laughs> of the dinner. She said, well, I don't know how to fix them. Microwave. <laughs> and I've got a big microwave. And she don't want to cook anymore. Yeah, we bought you a new microwave. <laughs> um, but 
I, I should have brought you a big bowl of that soup. I made homemade vegetable soup yesterday. Yeah, but it sounds, sounds pretty good. Dang, I should have brought well, you some. I'll tell you one thing. I don't I'll make cook another part. Now, but there's one thing about I cooked for years. Oh, gosh. I look back and I think, how did you know how to fix all that stuff? Oh, gosh, Mama Rogers could cook. Well, I guess so. I just, it's just Mama Rogers could fry the best fried chicken in the world. <laughs> she thought I stayed with her in North Birmingham Don't during the summer because I loved her. It was really good all of her food. <laughs> no, I love. Mama was a good one. I person. love that woman. She oh, was. I just wished I could have had her she was older. She, old I was person. only 18 when she died, and she way, way, way too young for her to die. But anyway, I know we've been going on, but I just had to tell y'all about the rat that ate Mother's <laughs> here names. Just think. What can I say? What if you'd run up on my ear and got them? I bet I'd have had a funny looking ear by now. There'll be some of these naysayers to watch this and say, I knew she was a hit from Alabama. Well, she is just about right. <laughs> well, at least I'm an educated no, hick. No, I'm not a hick, but I No, am you're a, not a hick. I don't really know what a hick is, but. A hick is something that don't do his butt from a hole in the ground. I'm here I go again. <laughs> Well, we are not hicks. No, we are not. <laughs> we know the difference between our butt and the hollow round. We just passed the house that they used to play at when I was four years old. Good Lord. My uncle lived there, and I thought that was the end of the world. <laughs> you thought it was so nice, didn't you? Oh, they had a piano in the, in the, where the cars was. Uh -huh. It had one note. <laughs> I don't know how long it is. And I'd go out there and sit and beat that one note for a while. Bless your heart. Did, you, ri did you write many one note songs? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I think I oh, could write Oh, I know. love Jesus. Yes, yes I, I do. do. <laughs> he is my Savior. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I bet that'd have been some good stuff. Oh, I love him. Yes, I do. Now you love him. That makes two. <laughs> Silly bridges. <laughs> Bye, y'all. We're going to have a full day. I'm devoting my whole day to this woman. Well, I ought to. I've sent a, sent enough for you, you little brat. She's so, I told y'all she's so sweet. <laughs> so sweet. You who little brat. Middle, who got up in the middle of bed and I holler, Mama! Well, that, well, that's what you're supposed to do. It's not, I know I don't, don't, don't act like well, you. What if I hadn't have got you? you? You'd have been a sorry mama. <laughs> <laughs> but you was a good mama. Well, be certain to the night, so you just might as well move over. Okay, talking. we got to go. It's already 20 minutes. On now this. you're talking about her. You know <laughs> yeah, we're talking about me now. I don't want to hear that. So tell them bye, mama. Bye. Bye-bye. I'll See? try to be nicer next time. Okay, bye. <laughs>